All right, today we are modding the Thrive Elevated Basking Loft. I actually have it installed in my 75 gallon aquarium right here behind me. Check out the review. I have a whole video going over this Thrive Turtle Basker and the pros and cons and just kind of how to put it together and how to set it up on a tank. But I want to show you real quick, this is it on a 75 gallon tank, no mods. Now there are a couple cons for the elevated turtle loft here that we went over in that review video and I just want to repeat them here today. Here they are. Number one, the ramp is pretty hard for turtles to climb. It's a little slippery and it's hard for them to get their claws in there to pull themselves up out of the water and onto our basking area here. Along with that, number two is our basking area. It's just a big screen. And the screen isn't awesome for turtles because turtles have claws and these claws really easily get caught in the screen. And it actually happened when I was doing the review in the last video, Harold actually got her claw stuck in there. So of course we're gonna fix that with a really easy modification. And then lastly, we wanna optimize the lighting on our loft here, and we're gonna modify it with what I think is a more optimal lighting setup. Let's bring this to the little chaperone and let's mod it up. All right, so I have the topper on a 40 gallon tank right now, and this is what it's built for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify it. So the first thing I wanna work on is that ramp and basking area. We're gonna do a super simple fix. So let's take a look at what it looks like right now. All right, when I approach these DIY projects, I try to focus on three things. That first one is it needs to be simple. I don't wanna use a ton of tools, especially a lot of tools that a lot of people probably don't have or I don't even know how to use. I wanna keep it really simple. Um, and number two, I wanna make it cheap. I'm not gonna break the bank on these type of projects because you don't need to. You absolutely do not need to and it's gonna work out just fine. And number three, I wanna make it look nice. Uh, it's not gonna be the Taj Mahal, but it's also not gonna be a dumpster. I wanna make it look nice, for my own eyes, of course. And of course, I don't want to be judged by my turtle with my sloppy work. All right, so for our ramp and our basking area, what I'm gonna use is this turf grass. Now, this is pre-cut from a big roll that I got from, I believe it was Lowe's. Uh, so it doesn't come like this. You need to cut it yourself, which is actually good because this is bigger than this little piece I have for some other project. It's, one of, it's easy to show you this way. Uh, but this is awesome because it's all just plastic. It doesn't have any like rubber or any additives. That's some of the nicer turf type grasses have. This is just a really simple, really cheap roll that you can get. I think it was like $20 at the hardware store. And that was for a huge roll. You might even be able to be like, hey, can I get a sample size that's only this big for free? So try that if you don't want to spend all that money and kind of get a lot of extra material from getting a roll like this. Or you could do something that's the exact same as that turf grass, but just a little bit different of material. And that's a reptile turf. Now you can get this at pretty much every pet store. And this is actually the Thrive brand. The ride as well. But this is awesome too. Uh, I don't really like it just because you can see the creases sometimes. Yeah, I'm sure you can get those out or just get over it. Uh, we also have a lot of turf grass left. I just want to use it. Uh, but yeah, this also will work really well with the same system of adhesion that we're using, which is glue. And if you are going to use this, just keep in mind it has a certain width and length. And right now this one will be too small for uh, the entire size of this. So I'm not going to use this today. I'm going to be using that turf grass. And all right, the first thing we need to do is figure out the size of the turf we're gonna need to install in here without interfering with things, getting in the way of things, making it hard to disassemble and reassemble things. I wanna make this kind of a seamless process uh, for whatever might come in the future where I might have to take things apart. All right, so when we take a close look here, we have this flange piece here. And if you remember, this is actually two pieces. So you have your top piece with your walls and then that top lid, and then you have your bottom piece, which is that basking area and ramp. And it just kind of slides on top like that. So just remember that is important because when you actually look at this, this is part of that wall structure. It's not part of the bottom. And there is a little gap in here, which is nice. So with that little lip there, I actually just put the grass underneath it just a little bit so that it lined up with the uh, with its own flange underneath here. So now that lines up and you just have a little bit of overlap, but it actually doesn't cause a lot of deflection or anything because there is that little gap that exists already. But what I really like about it is it looks really smooth. You don't have any, like if you were to install this a little bit off, you'd have like little gaps or something like that, at least a big risk of doing so if you weren't super careful with your cut. So what I'm really trying to say is you don't need this top piece here and that'll make doing this all so, 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 so much easier. All right, so with it off, now it's really easy because our template is basically just our little metal trim piece here. And we're gonna size it so that it'll fit right up to where the screen ends. 
right there. And you'll know when you put that top back on, you're gonna be covering over just over the, the edge here so you won't see the edge. All right, so one thing to note before we start cutting and just using the rectangle here as our template, this ramp is actually a little bit longer than just this opening here. So we need to be careful and we actually need to size it so it goes a little bit beyond the actual length of our screen on this side. It needs to go a little bit beyond, so actually just measure what that would be and just kind of project that and just leave yourself a little extra. We can cut off more if we need to, but you can't add anything after your first cut. Very important thing to note there. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a big rectangle. It's gonna be perfect along these lines and I'm gonna add just a little bit extra material, a couple inches over on this side so we can figure out the ramp afterward. Oh, and quick tip, the packaging in the box for our little turtle loft actually has this big piece of flat cardboard, and this is perfect for making a template that I can just use a little marker and just line up the corners here, and then start to start marking off what the sizes are, instead of trying to just measure things with only a tape measure, maybe a ruler that a lot of people have, use this as a template. It's a lot easier, and you'll see why once you try it out this way. All right, so I just measured that ramp to be 12 inches, so I actually need to go about an inch longer on our cardboard piece than I have for the cardboard piece currently. So just remember that, an extra inch on this length, otherwise our widths are good. Now let's actually cut out the turf. And this is that big roll I was talking about, using it for other things, but it's great for this project too. Uh, again, if you don't wanna get something big like this, get that reptile carpet I was showing you earlier but just using scissors here, cut out that template that we created with that cardboard. Uh, remembering to make it a little bit longer for that ramp section. You can always take more off when you need to. You can't add any, can't stress it enough. Now, once you have that strip cut to that template, it's time to lay it across and just make sure you got everything where you want it to be. And then I'm cutting two lines and these lines are basically gonna be that ramp portion. And it's just gonna basically become a little hinge so that it can go on that slope that the ramp is, but the rest of it will all rest on top of the screen. And you're gonna have that little extra that you're gonna to wanna to cut off at the end. Uh, but again, we left that on there because the ramp needs to be a little longer. Now I apologize for the poor transition here because I'm right into gluing. So what I'm doing is I'm using a standard glue gun with just standard glue sticks and I'm basically just laying down some glue. I'm starting on the corners, of course, because that's gonna be the most important part to get glue to adhere your carpet or your turf like I have here. Now you can use a couple different types of glue here. You could use just silicone. You could use a thicker, I would say gel-like super glue, but I'm using that hot glue, which I really like because it gives you about 30 seconds to actually glue whatever you're gluing down. You just need to press it into as you can see here, I'm just pressing down my hand, that grass onto the screen. It has a good consistency where it can seep into the screen because if you think about what you're gluing here, it's just a, that little metal ligament with a bunch of holes in it. So if I was to use something really runny, it would just travel right through the holes and it wouldn't really leave any glue left over. So that hot glue is a nice thick type glue. Uh, even when it's hot, it works really well to adhere both your turf and to that screen. So this is gonna be very much a waterproof adhesion. But again, you can use that super glue. I would suggest a gel. Just be really careful that you're getting enough on there. Or you can use silicone, which is gonna be just like this hot glue, but you're gonna to have to have it drying for over 24 hours um, because that's the, long the cure is for that type of glue. Now, you can see here, I'm just kind of going along. I started in the back and just started basically going back and forth, kind of rolling it almost across, putting glue down, just a bead of glue across, maybe a couple beads, whatever your glue gun can handle. And now we're working on that ramp. And that's actually a lot easier because it's just a solid piece of plastic, but really focus on that ramp because that's gonna be used the most and it's gonna be underwater. So put the most glue there and make sure that's really, really solid. When you think you're all done, do a little pull test, make sure nothing comes up. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is enhance the lighting for our setup here. And the way to do that is I'm gonna install this Exoterra light bracket. And what that affords me is it lets me put a larger type lamp, like a big deep dome, 
higher up than just leaving it on top of the screen here. Because if you watched my last video and saw the review, you only have seven inches here. And that means you have to either use pretty low powered lights, like a combo mini deep dome or uh, a linear bulb with a smaller heat bulb but you can't use the larger deep dome with a higher wattage lamp, like a mercury vapor bulb. I love mercury vapor bulbs. So I want to set this up so I just need a one bulb system. And it also lets you use a bigger type dome to have more spread of light. You need that lamp to be at least 10 inches and higher to get the right UVB and the right heat. So this is going to be perfect for that, but we're also going to need some black zip ties to help us hold it to the sidewall here where we're going to install it. All right, so these brackets, there's your extending arm here, and then you have your actual bracket that holds that arm. And you have this little screw here that you can tighten, and that just holds the arm here in place so it won't go up and down anymore. But this is totally adjustable, which is great. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing on the side wall of our basker here. I'm gonna be putting it as high up as possible, um, just to make it so I have the most opportunity to get the lamp as high as possible. All right, so you're basically gonna take your zip ties. I'm gonna use a pretty big one here. And I'm gonna locate it pretty much in the middle. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your zip tie and you're gonna tighten it so it goes around this little cutout here so that it rests on top of our little lip here. And I'm gonna do that in two or three places, haven't decided yet, but at least the bottom and the top. And once you tighten it, this thing's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna hold it on there really well and I'm just gonna have to do it so you can see what happens. And to make this a lot easier, you're gonna have this lid here. And you could do this all with the lid on and you just kind of prop it up, but I'm actually gonna take these screws off so that I'm not getting frustrated with the lid being on my way. So I took that lid off, now we're gonna basically line this up with the top of our wall here. And I just wanna do that to get as much height as absolutely possible. And then I'm gonna poke our zip tie through basically that top um, screen hole. And get through that top hole, pull it through. And I'm keeping this on the outside because it's kind of ugly. So I wanna keep it away from the viewing area and bring it back through the other side, but just as close to your bracket as possible. And then now it's all about getting everything in the right place where you're not gonna see things, but you can also tighten it still. It's a little bit awkward for sure. So once you kind of have it where you think you want it, we're basically gonna tighten it so it goes around like that. So I'm just gonna show you when you start tightening it. Do not over tighten until you know everything's in the place you want it. And then just start tightening down once you have where you want it, as high as possible. And kinda push it flat in the back, just so there's no way this thing can loosen on you after the fact. All right, so that first one, it's gonna be a little wobbly. But once you put the second one, it should be good, and then a third if we need it. All right, it's on there now. It's a little bit wobbly, but that's okay. It's not going anywhere. Those are very strong zip ties, and this is a metal screen. Yeah, it's a little bit flexible, but that's okay. All right, let's put the bottom back on. Let's see how everything looks. All right, there you go, folks. It's all installed. Super simple. All we did was add this turf graph, use a little glue to do that. And then we added our light bracket and just used a couple of zip ties to do that. Super simple mod. Let's take a closer look. All right, looks super nice. Grass came out really well. Yeah, there's imperfections in there, but they're hard to see, especially through that screen. 
we open that up, we can see, look how easy that's gonna be for your turtle to climb now. And again, if you used Repti Turf instead, that reptile carpet, that's gonna be just as good as this grass. I like both, but your turtle's not gonna get their nails stuck anymore and they're gonna easily be able to climb that kind of slippery ramp. All right, then over here we got our light bracket. That was super easy, just three zip ties. And you just put that right through our metal mesh here and it holds it really well, it's pretty heavy, but still it's not really deflecting very much and it is very, very sturdy. So now I can have a couple more inches and use a mercury vapor bulb. I'm using a hundred watt. You could probably use an 80 watt and get a little closer. Uh, right now I'm actually gonna check for you what our UVB is gonna be looking like. All right, I'm gonna use this solar meter to check the UVB that is being produced where my turtle will be. And now I slid this all over just so it would be a direct shot um, to use this device because you have to measure it the vertical direction. So I'm just gonna turn it on and we're getting where my turtle would be, approximately, no, oh, it's a little bit high, around high four, five. So that's definitely on the high end of the Ferguson zone that you're looking for for most turtles. All right, to get that to a four, I actually just adjusted it up a little bit here, and that's about where your turtle's gonna be. And we're at around a four, which is a lot better, because um, it gives you a little wiggle room to be not too high, but not too low. And so you can see here, I actually just had to extend it even higher than that bottom rung there, but that's totally fine. This thing is still sturdy, and it's not going anywhere, which is awesome, because you just have three zip ties holding this whole thing together. And you can make it work with this 100 watt mercury vapor bulb, which is my favorite type of bulb. And it just, let me put this back for you. It just gives a much better spread in your basking area for your turtle. You're not trying to find a little bulb or soak up the sun in two different bulbs that are separated from each other. All in one, love the mercury vapor bulb. And let me put this up on a 75 gallon so you can see it on a larger tank. And I think it'll look really good. All right, here's that Thrive Elevated Basking Loft on my 75 gallon tank. Now I've had it up for a couple days because I was trying to catch Harold climbing up the ramp and basking away to prove to you that it's working well. And Harold is super skittish, especially in a new basking area like this one. So I did get the slightest glimpse I'm gonna show on the screen here. Ha, there she is, right on top of that basking area. And poof, there she goes. But I was able to watch from afar and. She was able to climb that new and improved grass-lined ramp much easier than just that plastic part of the ramp. And then on top here, she wasn't getting her nails caught in anything in that screen anymore, so that's awesome. And obviously the new lamp with that mercury vapor bulb, it's just really expanding the basking area to be a little bigger for a larger turtle like Harold here. Let's take a really quick close look so I can show you how it kind of fits on the 75 gallon. All right, like I showed you in the review of this product, it fits perfectly on a 75 gallon tank. You got your trim in the middle here where that just ends so it fits right in between that open space in your tank and you can see the grass looks really nice and that zip tie mechanism hasn't gone anywhere and i don't expect it to it's perfectly strong to hold up our lamp there and as you can see it's nice because in a 75 gallon your turtle actually has a pretty good runway before they're going to hit the wall whereas in the 40 gallon if you have a larger turtle they're going to hit the wall pretty fast Oh, uh, there's Harold there. She definitely will not show us how this thing works, but it looks awesome in the 75 gallon tank. And with that, thank you for watching this whole video. You made it to the end, congrats. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you wanna see more DIY videos, check out my channel. And long live your turtle.